In this segment, we're going to talk about beam search and more generally other decoding strategies for producing language out of language models. So the decoding strategies we're going to talk about are going to apply to two types of models that we think about in this class. The first is language models, uh, just placing distributions over the next word. And the second are sequence to sequence models, placing next word distributions over an output y conditioned on an input x. So for in both of these cases, at the end of the day, we have this model and we give the system some input, either a prefix of y's or an x, or you know we just want it to straight up generate a story or generate something for us. So how do we actually do this generation? So one option is just greedy search. So we just take the most likely next word at each step, and we kind of repeat this and just crank out a sequence. That's one approach. Uh, it's going to be the sort of worst of all possible worlds, but it actually works pretty well in practice, so uh, it does get used. Um, the one we're going to talk about right now is using beam search, which is going to be a kind of improved version of greedy search that's going to allocate a little bit more computation, but ideally find something with even higher probability. Um, and the third option, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, is uh, drawing samples from the model. So rather than getting the most likely thing, instead draw a random thing. So let's dive into beam search. So uh, we're going to assume that we have a vocabulary of size v and a sequence of length n that we're going to generate. So at the first time step, we can think about basically the probability distribution over the first word. And I'm just going to you know, make up some words and some probabilities here, um, blah, blah, blah. And uh, each of these things you know, has a pretty low probability. The model doesn't really know what it's supposed to say, um, et cetera. So, there are v of these. So there are a lot of different words that we have to consider here. And then if we think about what happens at the second time step, each of these has a number of different things that can kind of produce, right? So we could say the dog, the cat, the fish, etc., cetera, right? Uh, and each of these gets a probability. And these are going to be even smaller now because uh, we are sort of multiplying you know, small number after small number together. Uh, and there are generally v continuations uh, of each of these. And so we end up with v squared hypotheses here, or size of v squared hypotheses. Uh, and at the end of the day, we are going to end up with size of e to the n uh, total sequences. Um, so, I mean, uh, I think we're kind of familiar with exponentials being bad. So the fact that this is exponential in n and you might want to generate something potentially very long is a problem. So what this is, uh, this is the kind of exhaustive search mechanism that's going to enable us to find a uh, highest probability sequence, but we're going to do something better with an approximation. So beam search is going to approximate exhaustive search, um, but with less compute. And basically, the idea is keep the top k hypotheses at each step. So um, if we kind of go back to the uh, this lattice of options we were building above, we're going to kind of revisit it. And let's say, let's say k equals 3. Then what we're going to do is we're going to cut the model off here and ignore all of the rest of the options that come afterwards. All right, and then each of these still generates 
a whole bunch of possible uh, possible next words, right? So we get the dog, um, you know, all these all these things, and we generally end up with uh, k times v of these. Okay, but once again, we're going to chop off most of that. We're only going to keep around the top things, which are maybe the dog, the cat, and let's say a uh, cat or something like that. So we end up with a relatively small number of options at each time step. And then, uh, you know, there's an expensive process of checking all the stuff that comes next. Uh, but then we always prune back down to this small set. So the runtime here, we can kind of think about it in terms of several uh, different mechanisms. We're not really going to talk about runtime of data structures. Like you need to maintain some kind of heap or priority queue or something like that uh, to actually manage all of these items. But like that overhead is so small compared to the overhead of running big neural nets that we're not even going to think about it. Um, instead, the kind of relevant things are that uh, we're going to have k times n transformer calls in the sense that we think about just how many times do we need to run the transformer and get a distribution over the next words. Well, it happens kind of once at the first time step, and then it happens three times or k times uh, for each subsequent time step, because you need to consider each of the things in your beam, run the transformer over it, get the distribution over the next words. Um, and we consider k times v times n hypotheses, ultimately. So um, it's much smaller than uh, v to the n. Um, you know, we're just not thinking about that many items, uh, but it still allows us to explore the space in a way that kind of scales with k, essentially. OK, so uh, beam search you're going to see used most frequently in sequence-to-sequence -sequence conditional generation settings like machine translation, uh, where you really want to get a high probability thing. And you know that, OK, greedy is going to find me something, but then beam search is going to find something of even higher prob probability than greedy will. Um, greedy can get kind of derailed down some path and pick some word that's then going to lead to some low probability stuff later, and beam search might avoid that. And that can lead to like better translations. Um, but we'll see later that for certain types of applications, beam search is not what you want. And it's also the case that once you get bigger and bigger transformer models, the beam search becomes less crucial because these models already do a little bit of kind of not explicit planning ahead, but the modeling of the distribution of the next word already accounts for um, the fact that uh, more stuff is going to be generated later. So, um, you know, there's less of a need to use this with the kind of latest and greatest models. And it's also very expensive, which when you have a model that's already kind of breaking the bank in terms of compute, you probably don't want to use this. Um, however, it's an important search technique to be aware of and uh, sort of an important uh, way of producing hypotheses out of these models. That's the end of this segment.